What is up guys, Bob Buskirk here at Think Computers and we're back with another BIOS video. This BIOS is from Biostar and it's the BIOS on their B360 GT3S. This BIOS should be pretty much the same across almost all of their motherboards in the racing line. As you can see, we have the racing graphics up here and all of that. So when you get into the BIOS here, we have some information. We have information on our CPU, our memory, our temperature. And I believe this is system temperature. This is not our CPU temperature. I could be wrong, but um, this is temperature right here. We have our date and of course the time right here as well. You're brought to the main screen um, when you first log into the BIOS. You can switch this, which I'll show you in a little bit, but all you can really do here is you can change the language and uh, set the system date and system time. And that is pretty much it. If we go over to advanced, this is everything that of course is on the board itself. So CPU configuration, of course, we can go into all of that stuff. SATA and RST, of course, you can set all that up and you can see the current drives you have installed. So as you can see, we have a single drive installed right there. Trusted computing, um, you can enable or disable that stuff. ACPI settings, again, you can enable or disable that stuff. Hardware monitor, it just gives you, I guess it is our CPU temperature, running a little hot right now. Um, but this will show you a real time view of your CPU temperature, your fan speed, um, your V core voltages, your DRAM voltages, and all that other kind of stuff um, right there. And uh, you can set a shutdown temperature. So this, this is disabled by default, but you can set one. So if for some reason your cooling fails, you won't fry your CPU. Going back here, USB configuration, of course, that's all the stuff that has to do with USB. So you can enable legacy USB supports and all of that stuff. And you can see what we have connected under USB devices. Under network stack, of course, that is if you have your network stack enabled in the BIOS, you can turn it on actually um, and do all that kind of stuff, you know. NVMe configuration, you can see we do have a drive installed, an NVMe drive, and this is where you can configure it. Um, basically no configuration really, it just lets you know the model number and all of that. It's a good way to test if you have a drive installed and if it's getting picked up by the board, it will show up. If there is no drive, it will not show up in here. Offboard PCI SATA controller. Um, again, we have no PCI Express SATA controller or PCI uh, Express SSDs, but they will show up here if you have them installed. Under chipset, we have our system agent configuration. Pretty basic stuff right there. PCIO configuration. Again, you can enable, disable your HD audio here. Onboard device, uh, you can enable or disable your onboard LAN if you don't want it to be on. You can go ahead and do that. Under boot, of course, we have the ability uh, to set our boot devices and everything like that. Um, as you can see, we only have one drive installed, so not a whole lot of options there. Under security, you can set a user password and a administrator password if you want. And then under one or o and &E, I'm not exactly sure how they're uh, using that abbreviation. Um, you can set your start page. So as I said, it loads to the main page first, but you can of course see how you can go ahead and set this if you want. Here, you can also set your ring ratio mode um, by all cores, per core, or fixed ratio. Um, and then your OC ratio and your memory profiles. Now, one thing that's interesting is that this board only supports up to a certain amount of memory. So the memory that we have installed is actually supposed to be running at uh, 3000 megahertz. But as you can see over here, it's not actually running at that speed. Um, that is because it doesn't support up to 3000 megahertz. But you can load the profile um, and it will get it to, you know, what this board supports. So it's something you want to think about when it comes to this. And of course, with the uh, B360 chipset in general, there's no memory overclocking and there's no CPU overclocking there. Under memory, um, we can see our timings here as well. Um, so you can change your timings and do all that if you want. Voltage configuration, again, this is everything to do with all of your voltages, not just your CPU. You can do CPU, CPU load line calibration, um, 
you can do your v core you can do your dram you can do all that stuff as you can see we have it all on auto here memory insight this just gives you information on each stick of ram we have four sticks in here so you can see and as you can see that xmp profile you can see it's 3000 megahertz but again we're not running at that so um but you can see all the information so you want to make sure your memory is running at what it should be you can check all of that here and then if we get out of that and go over to save and exit of course we can save our changes and reset we can discard our changes but we do have the boot override which i think it should be on every bios um it's great that we have it here on the biostar bios this basically allows you to fast boot to say a flash drive but just do it once so you don't have to worry about you know when you do your windows install and then hurrying up and running over to your cpu or running over your system and pulling out that flash drive what this will do is you know if you had a flash drive in you could select it hit enter that would start your windows installation and then you the next restart you won't have to worry about pulling that drive out so great to see that here we have a couple other things we have our fan controls um, which is f5 i believe you can just click yeah you can just click here um, and you can see your we have no other system fans we just have our cpu because we're on a test bench um, but you can see you know your temperatures in real time and then your control mode you know quiet aggressive manual and full on you can set that um, and you can switch between dc and pwm modes for all of the fans i believe there's only it looks like a, at least according to this there's only two fan headers here that you can control but it is in the bios so you don't have to do this you know in windows which you can but this is just before you even install windows you can have this stuff all set up if you want and then we have our vivid led oops you have to hit, I guess you have to hit escape to get out. So hit escape and then you can hit F6 to go to, there it goes, to go to your vivid LED. And this is controls for the RGB LEDs that are on the board and the RGBs that are on the board in this board specifically go down where the at the end of the board by your audio components so you can easily change the colors here to whatever you want um, and then you have uh, you know effects so that's called led sparkle but they're effects so you have a breathing mode and you have a shine mode breathing of course everybody knows what that is shine all that does it's a flashing mode it's, i guess they call it shine for some reason but it's just a flashing mode um, and then um, the default color is actually blue for these leds but you can i don't know what auto means uh not really sure why they changed that if i just change it to auto here it changes it to red uh or like a yellow orange kind of color so um but you can go ahead and again select any color that you want from the color wheel and it will change those colors in real time because i'm just watching it do it right now so you can go ahead and do that if you want and then you can see this is the system rgb led so again that's that row by your audio components but if you have RGB headers, there's two RGB headers on this board. You can control them this way as well. Um, I believe you know you can connect any default RGB uh, product to these RGB headers. They're four pins, so you can control them here in the BIOS. But BIOSTAR does offer a Windows desktop client. Um, check out our full review of this motherboard, which will be linked below, where we go over that software. It's pretty much the same. It's just a little different uh, than being in a BIOS. But that is it. So we hit escape and go back out. We'll move back over here to our main page. And you know this BIOS is really easy to use. Everything is easily found. It's not sluggish. It's not slow. Even the fan and vivid LED uh sections they're not slow either so being that this is my first BioStar biostar bios i'm actually pretty impressed with it um you expect from a company like biostar not reviewing a lot of their products maybe it would be clunky or something like that but this just works really well everything's really easy to get to and again you can use it as you can hear with the keyboard or your mouse works very easily so if you have any questions about this bios go ahead and leave it in the comment section below so until next time catch you guys later